on my screen. Uh, if you want to see the work I've been doing on QR codes, it's kind of, I've been really interested in how QR codes work because uh, as the pandemic set in, so many restaurants started using QR codes for their menus and all sorts of other interesting purposes. And I just started seeing them everywhere. So I've been doing some research into whether or not you can create optical collisions or QR codes that look ex that are extremely similar, where you could just take a pen and kind of modify one into the other, but it would actually go to a different domain. So I took about 1,200 very, very similar domains to a target domain, which was our hackhat.com, H-A-K-C-A-T.com. And I was able to see that by running it through, um, there was a 23% difference. And this is a, a difference image. So I basically compared two images and then um, this highlighted region, the white part, is the part of those two images that are different. So by changing one letter, um, H-A-T-C-A-T instead of H-A-T-G-A-T, I was able to cause a 23% difference, which is huge. Like almost a quarter of the image is totally different from just changing that single character. But if I changed a, a different character, H-A-T-G-A-T instead of H-A-T-C-A-T, I got this. So this is only like 6% difference. And this is still probably not something you could do with like a pen and paper, but it is interesting to see that if you examine them and really compare a bunch of them, you can find ones that are so similar that with a little bit of an overlay or just by changing some parts of it, you might actually be able to change a QR code uh, that's already printed into saying something totally different than what it was intended to say. So that's kind of my goal with this research. I ran into a jam because I tried to sign up for a VPS service so I could run a server to generate 300 million, um, basically every possible like six character domain, um, and then run it through this and find which one was absolutely closest to the target uh, QR code. But um, I got flagged by Linode uh, for being a security researcher, a very, you know, uh, kind of restricted class of people, I guess. And uh, I had to explain myself and tell them exactly what I was doing. And the whole thing took so long that I'd already moved on to a different like part of the project by the time they got back to me. I'm like, okay, you can generate QR codes. It took like two days. Um, so anyway, uh, I had a little bit of snag at this part, but then I got interested in a different part of QR codes, which is 3D printing them. So right here is a 3D printed stencil uh, for a QR code. And this is quite a complicated QR code. And this actually scans. Now it doesn't scan great. And Alex was able to scan it last night and it, it did in fact work. And this encodes for um, the names of all of the hackers who were part of my student club at Pasadena City College. So all of us um, kind of have our own little hacker names. And this is not only a little story about like how we all met, but then like a little like shout out to each one of those people. And um, this is designed to be put on, you know, a piece of paper or something, as you can see on my screen here, and spray painted over or otherwise just marked over. You can also use it as a stamp if you wanted to, and uh, meant to create a QR code that's scannable. Now, this one um, didn't didn't exactly uh, get enough defi definition to scan properly, and I've I've had a pretty difficult time getting these more complex ones to scan. However. Um, it is a really cool thing to do with a 3D printer uh, to be able to take this and this one. Uh, so what's interesting is, again, this one actually scans. If you put this on like a light table or something like that and you actually capture this, Alex was able to scan this and decode the information that's saved in this like physical object. So, of course, is this as efficient as just like writing it down? Like, no, it's not. And it's pretty difficult. I had to run this through a bunch of different things. Uh, there's a free online tool that allows you to take a SVG file and turn it into something for a laser cutter, but I don't have a laser cutter. So I had to instead change it into a 3D like printable image. So this took some time, but the point of the program was to correct any islands that normally would fall out because they're not connected to anything. So as you can see, these corners are very delicate because we can't actually make them like the the open space they're supposed to be we have to use like stenciling in order to kind of fill them in so this was a really cool and interesting project and i did manage to get some uh some qr codes that scan super super well so i can't um put them on the stream because they encode for uh things that i probably don't want you decoding for uh in our just test example um but i will put some up uh on my twitter if you're interested in this sort of thing um, creating 3D printable QR code stencils is actually super fun because you see them everywhere. Uh, well, you see QR codes everywhere and people are curious about QR codes. So if you want to trick someone into scanning something and reading a message or going to a URL, QR codes are kind of where it's at. And these stencils are actually not that hard to make and they were super fun. So that's my personal research I've been working on this week. Um, again, super fun and interesting QR codes, uh, ubiquitous. We see them everywhere and not a lot of people understand how they work. So 
this one, uh, this one will scan, and I'm going to be still working on making more complex ones that are able to uh, be printed maybe a little bit better. I was wondering with the difference image, which was pretty cool, if you could compensate for error correction. Because like with QR codes, you can destroy like up to like 30% of them and they'll still work. Mm -hmm. I was wondering like for the difference one, since that would give you like the exact QR code for like a different URL, how much of that you could just like completely excise. So you have to like fill in even less and then it like automatically corrects itself <clears> for <throat> the correct URL. That might be a possibility. Well, if cool. I was going to build a program for this, what I would do is I would have something that like begins to convert one image to the second image. So starts like aggressively trying to convert, like flip mm -hmm. it basically, and then have another program that reads the QR code and, and basically read at what transition boundary does oh. it flip yeah. from reading yeah. as hackcat.com to hackgat.com. Yeah. And then like find basically the, the break point between those two images. That's what I'm really interested in finding. So, I mean, that's a good idea. Like yeah. maybe we should, maybe after our nugget stuff, we should work on that. But yeah, kind of my, my idea is that you could solve for like the minimum damage you could do to a QR code to make it still readable, but actually flip to a different QR code. So by some of that could be just by damaging portions of the error correction to make it more vulnerable to that flipping process. Lots of fun stuff. Again, like we, we do a lot of just independent research so we can continually add new things to the community. I'd like to touch on it at the top of the hour. Thank you everyone for joining us today. And especially thank you for your suggestions for Alex's hacker name. I think there were some really good ones in there. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Thank you again. And make sure to check out the Q&A stream on uh, Tuesday where we're going to be going live again on Hack5 and we will have uh, lots of excellent questions to answer. So get yours in if you didn't get it answered today and we'll make sure to answer it on the next stream on Tuesday. We'll see you then. Bye.